There you go, Nick. Okay. Hey, everybody. It's Nick Baldwin. We are here with Tristan Almada and our wonderful, amazing, uh, incredible guest uh, for the very first time in Lab Code Agents and Command Your Conversion, two groups in one. Mo Anderson. Just want to tell you a little bit about Mo. Uh, in case you don't know who she is, she joined Keller Williams uh, uh, as president and CEO in 1995. Uh, she grew the company from 35 market centers to 530 in a decade, which is inc incredible growth. Uh, Mo's respect and um, renown as a business leader, she reached far beyond the real estate industry. The culture she created within KW is recognized across industries all over the world, not just real estate. Uh, her autobiography, A Joyful Life, it served for the catalyst for a multi-year book tour where Mo has presented Seven Pillars of a Joyful Life to audiences ranging uh, from book clubs to corporate events to church groups to everything. Uh, she also continues to be the beloved shining star of KW, leading and nurturing the company's culture for a new era. And she's still the vice chairman of the board at Keller Williams International, which is incredible, Mel. So thank you so much for being here with us today. Well, I'm excited to be here today. Can't wait to hear what you ask me. Well, we have a, a lot of great questions. Hopefully, you feel they're great. Um, I've been with KW for a little over a decade. Tristan's been with the company for about the same amount of time? Yeah, 2009. So. Okay, so we joined around the same time. And so for those people who may not be familiar, maybe they're not with Keller Williams, um, can you just kind of share your story? I know you have your book. Uh, that kind of goes through your story, how you grew up on a farm, you became a CEO. Uh, but how did you come to meet Gary and where did that relationship start to form? Well, it, it was really interesting because one of the worst things that ever happened to me in my life was in the late 80s. And we grew up, my husband and I grew up in what I call the oil patch now, I know a lot of people don't like oil companies, but a lot of people do, and I'm one that loves them because I see the good they do in our communities. And so I'm an old oil patch girl, you know, where it's boom and bust, boom and bust. So adversity is just a part of my life. I've, I've had a lot of adversity. And in the late 80s, we had a recession that was almost as bad as coronavirus. Now, they didn't put us in our homes and do a lockdown. You know, they didn't do that. But in terms of the economy, it was really as bad as our coronavirus. And so we lost all of our money. We didn't lose our home. We didn't have to declare bankruptcy but we did lose everything else. Now, now that I'm older and I can look back on that circumstance in the late 80s, the truth is it set up a series of events that caused Gary Keller to accidentally find me. That lucky guy. He was so lucky he found me. <laughs> and so that horrible situation led to Gary finding me, me uh, agreeing to go be his partner and go help him expand the company throughout the United States. And then I opened Canada. And then of course, later we opened worldwide. And so that grew into the largest real estate franchise organization in the world. So it was adversity that gave birth to all that. Is that not interesting? Very, very, which leads us into the question that I really want to ask you, Mo, and that's you know, the, the culture that you instilled into this company, which is God, and family first and then business, right? How, how was that perceived at the beginning and how did you make people buy into that? Because in the world that we live in now, not a lot of people uh, are open as to talking about God 
and business, right? Those well, two they things. think you're an idiot if you even say that. Yeah. You know, what do you mean, God, family, and business? Are you a cult? <laughs> <laughs> you know. <Yeah. laughs> and what we, uh, what I did was uh, when I went to be the CEO of Keller Williams Realty, I saw that all of our training material, what little bit we had back then, did not address this issue because you see a culture must be based on something. Well, it's based on the Y4C2Ts. And if you really look at the Y4C2Ts, you will notice it's really based on Judeo-Christian beliefs. You know, win, win, or no deal, being good to others and being a team, together everyone achieves more, honesty, um, uh, I mean, integrity, and tr a trust begins with honesty. All of those issues are really biblical are, are really principles found in almost every holy book. Not all of them are found in all of the holy books of the different faiths, but most of them are found. So I just stuck into a training thing, uh, God, family, and business as being the, the most important stated value that we have. And I gave it to Gary and I said, Gary, is this okay? And he said, well, yeah, you know, it's what, it's the truth. It's what our company is based on. And yeah. so everybody bought into it. And when we use the word God, we mean what, whatever faith you have. You know, I happen to be a Christian, but you might be a Hindu or you might be a Jewish or you might be a Muslim. Like right now, I have a Muslim agent who is emailing me every single day to give me an update on his family because the whole family has Corona. And one extended member of the family has already died but you see he loves me and I love him and he wants me to pray for him isn't that beautiful that see that's beautiful. the way it's supposed to be and yeah. so how do you so well I'm sorry but how do you address those people that kind of feel a little left out when you mentioned God family then business when they don't believe in God but you know, they're, it's not saying that they're bad or good or anything. It's just saying that it's just, that's not their choice. That's all. Well, one of them came up to me one day and said, Mo, is there room for me in this company because I'm an atheist? And I said, well, what does being an atheist have to do about room in our company? Of course you're welcome in this company. He says, what, I, what do I do with God, family, and business? And I say, said, well, you can either leave God out and say family and business, or you can stick in atheist family and business for you. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you know, whatever you want to do. So he gave me a hug and said, oh, I get it. Makes and, sense. Yeah, you know, Mo, I think that I, I love that because uh, I believe that, you know, I'm Jewish, right? So, and I married a Catholic and I'm not very practicing in, in my in my Jewish religion and my wife is practicing and she goes to church every Sunday with the boys and I go with them too. Um, and, you know, I think that when it comes to when you're saying God, it's like, let's take the millionaire real estate agent, for instance. Millionaire doesn't mean the, mil, the word millionaire in that book doesn't mean you got to make a million bucks. It's whatever millionaire means to you. Right. Like how you feel rich in in life and business and it doesn't mean money right how will you feel rich in in your life whether you're uh whatever whatever god you believe in or if you're a spiritual person or you meditate or you pray i think it's all encompassing and and so um you know there's always going to be people that that feel like maybe they're being left out but i think that the word god in that sense uh, to me, encompasses a lot of different feelings and emotions and beliefs. Uh, it's feelings, emotions, and whatever it is, is your thing, is, is what, yeah. what it yeah. is for you. For the Jewish person and for the Christian person, God means the God of Abraham. 
uh, for a Muslim person, it means Allah. For I don't, I don't understand the Hindu religion quite enough to understand exactly how that works. But for the Hindu, it may be something else. But let me tell you a quick story. Uh, there, when I was CEO, Stanford University at, called me up and asked me if they could write a white paper about our culture. And I said, well, yes, you can on three conditions. One, you come and watch me teach FSO so that you learn our models and systems. Two, that you stay an extra three days to meet the rest of the team. And three, that when you write it, you give it back to us and let us read it to make sure it's accurate because I don't want a bunch of fake news out there. I use fake news. <laughs> And before Trump used the word, can you imagine? Right. And so they did. They wrote the paper. And then, you know, a few years later, I called them up and I said, it's time for you to update the paper. And they updated it. And we made sure it was correct and so on and so forth. So then Yale University started using the white paper. And for a period of years, they would always call me and ask me to come to Yale while it was presented to their MBA students. Wow. And the first question every single year was this. I always knew when I went what the first question would be. Doesn't God, family, and business hurt you? And let me tell you how I answered it. I'm so different than the Fortune 500 CEOs. I'm just <laughs> me, and I'm just an old farm girl who knows how to work hard. I said, okay, I can't believe that a farm girl from Oklahoma can teach you something. But get your pencils out, get your paper out, and write it down. <clears throat> so they all got their pencils and their paper. And I said, God, family, and business serves as a magnet. Did you hear that word, magnet? Mm -hmm. To attract like-minded people. It doesn't mean we're all the same religion. It doesn't mean we're all the same nationality. It mm -hmm. doesn't mean we're the same about anything other than God, whatever it is for you, family and business is really important. And then I said to him, when you have like-minded people who buy into your purpose or your mission, you march forward with a power that is unbelievable. Do you understand that that's why we succeeded in the downturns? You all are trying to figure out how we did that. It was because we have like-minded people who believe in our mission, and we're powerful even in downturns. Do you little MBA students get it? And they'd laugh and smile and say yes. <laughs> Do you understand that principle? Yeah. Why minded? Doesn't mean we're the same. Right. Heavens no. We're Jewish, we're Hindu, we're Christian, we're atheists, we're whatever we are. But these issues we either respect or family and business is really important to us. I think if we were all the same, Mo, life would be pretty boring, don't you think? Oh my, <laughs> yes. You know, I mean, if we if, yes. if we agreed if we agreed with everything, I mean, it would be it would be pretty it would be a pretty boring uh, experience. Hey, so I wanted to go into the culture a little bit more. So, you know, the Keller Williams culture um, has has uh, found its way uh, into other organizations. You know, you've been praised for uh, creating something that, um, like I said, uh, other industries have adopted. Um, and so the culture that you that you put into the company is that a culture that you know you uh, lived by in your early life, or is it something that you uh, developed later on in life once you started to uh, become the CEO of Keller Williams, or did you take 
those ideals from 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 your own life growing up on the farm and implement it into a business situation? Uh, I had a real estate company before I ever heard of Keller Williams, and I developed that culture in in that office, and I learned a whole lot about how you build culture in a real estate office. I had no idea that God was preparing me for Keller Williams because it wasn't even born yet when I was, when I was building that office. And so when I went to Keller Williams, it was just a kind of a natural thing. I'd, I'd been down that road before and I knew some pitfalls. I knew you had to tread carefully because you, you want to love everybody, not stuff your stupid religion down their throat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I, I don't mean to call a religion stupid. Forgive me for saying that, but you get my point. Yeah, it makes sense. You don't ever do that. Even Jesus, he just taught us to love people. You know, quit worrying about anything. Just love your people. Just love your people. And I just get such joy in, in, in showing hospitality to the other faiths that are inspirational morning. It, I'm just higher than a kite when I get to do that and, and show respect and love to the different religions that we have in our company. On I love that, Mo. Morning. I wanted to ask you, in regards to that, which is that culture that you're talking about, with what we're experiencing right now with COVID-19, what are some ways that we as business owners can continue to keep this culture alive in our organization, uh, digitally or in other ways that you're seeing your business working? Well, first of all, you're going to have to to encourage your people to get rid of the fear that they have in their minds because this kind of a crisis really stimulates the fear and in, if any of them are telling you that they're not fearful it's probably a lie yeah everybody experiences fear now everybody Everybody, everybody handles it a little bit differently, but the fear is real. I've even experienced it because I've got three offices to shore up. I've got a region to shore up and I have the international office to shore up because I'm an owner in the international office. In the international office, the cash calls will be in the millions, not the thousands. Yeah. And, and so I got fearful, you know, will my, I've done a good job of saving money all these years, but will my money last for all of the stuff I've got to bolster? So you have fear. Of course you do. Now, what I do when I have fear is I lean into my faith. And there's a little verse I memorized as a kid that says, God has not given you a spirit of fear. He has given you a spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. And a sound mind means mindset. So when I have my calls with market centers, I, I try to teach them the four truths about mindset. Because every day an agent has to get up in the morning and say, okay, how's my mindset? And if there's crummy stuff in my head, I got to get rid of it and I got to get the positive stuff in there. And it's just a daily exercise of the mind. It doesn't just happen. You have to make that mind. And I tell them the mind is not you. The mind is just a part of you. And it should be your servant, not your master. You that's, get my point? That's beautiful, Mo. I love that. It should be your servant, not your master. Here's something that you just uh, reminded me of. So when this first all started in the United States, uh, I reached out to a, a few friends of mine, and one of them, you may know, wrote Emith or Emith Revisited, Michael Gerber. And he said, because I asked him, I'm like, hey, what do you think of this? What's going on? He said, 
Tristan, today is no different than yesterday. You, you had this fake certainty that you think you would be alive today. Guess what? It's not up to you if you're going to live today or tomorrow. Today is no different than yesterday. And I thought, whoa, thanks for putting that in perspective. It's exactly what you're saying. You know, it's, it's that shift in mind. It's, it's just that you have to do business a little differently. Now, in the states where they say real estate is an essential business, the agents are learning with booties, gloves, and a mask. They can do a whole lot of stuff. And boy, those sales are coming in. In states where they're totally shut down, they're learning they can do a whole lot with uh, virtual tours. and calling their, well, everybody's learning about calling their sphere of influence. And it's so exciting to see what the agents are calling them about. Yeah. You know, the love call, just how are you and what do you need? And if you need anything, call me. And there's an agent in Orlando who did that. And a woman called her back and she said, I am desperate for my medicines. Do you, can you go to the pharmacy and get my medicine? And the, and the Keller Williams agent realized she lived over an hour away. So because her mind was free of fear, the Keller Williams agent said to herself, I'm going to find me a Facebook group in Ocala because that's where the woman lived. So she call, she finds it on Facebook, the Uber drivers in Ocala. She calls one of them, and he lives real close to both the pharmacy and the woman. She has her medications in less than 30 minutes. Now, let me tell you what, the bond between that woman and that agent is so tight, nothing will ever break it. Uh, another market center I talked to, they decided as a group they were going to find two businesses that they wanted to save. One was a restaurant, and I don't remember what the other one was. So they call their sphere of influence. And they say, you know what, as a group, we're trying to save such and such a restaurant and such and such a business. And we just wanted to let you know that we're making a giant effort to save them and we're ordering our food from the restaurant and we're ordering whatever else from that other business because I can't remember what it was. And the business owner called Keller Williams and said, what in the world are you doing? We're having all these calls for food. <laughs> and they're telling us that Keller Williams recommended us. I mean, the guy was so joyful. He was shouting because he was close to having to close. So, I mean, there are a jillion reasons. We had an agent in another region die yesterday Whoa. And, of Corona. And uh, there were, because he was on a ventilator. And so there were medical bills, funeral expenses, a 12 year old daughter who needs a college fund for some day. So the market center, we're going to try to help them through KDB Cares, but the market center created a GoFundMe page and they only had $3,000 in it. And I told the team leader, I said, you encourage your agents to call everybody in their sphere of influence. Tell them about this death. Tell them there's medical need, money for medical needs, funeral needs, a college fund, et cetera. And say, if you can give 50 cents or $1,000 or anything in between, it would be so appreciated. And that GoFundMe page went way up. Or you can call the sphere of influence and say, listen, in our inventory, whether it's yours or somebody else's, we have a three bed, two bed, two bath house that's cute as a bug. It would be a fabulous rental property. And I'm looking for grandma, grandmothers and grandfathers who want to buy a rental property that they can sell it when that little grandkid grows up and put that money in it. Can you think of anybody for me to call? Well, what they're finding out is a lot of people they're calling want to buy it. 
So they do a virtual tour and they're selling stuff that way. I mean, there are a jillion ways. I mean, a jillion things to call your people about. That's very true, Mo. Um, in regards to holding virtual open houses, uh, I'm going to put up a link so people can see the the options that you have to run virtual open houses, just so you can break some of those mental barriers that are holding you back. Uh, take a look at that. And I know Nick had a question on Nick. Now your your internet is awesome now, Nick. It looks good and smooth. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, my internet was cutting out a little bit. <clears throat> hey, Mo, so, you know, um, like you were talking about technology and we have to adapt to current situations uh, all the time in life and, and in business, obviously. Um, and with culture, uh, culture may, may maybe not change, but it may have to adapt. So when, when the, in, in the passage of time, um, how do you, how have you been able to adjust culture accordingly? Um, and what tips do you think you can give to others uh, who may want to do the same? Maybe updating certain things or pivoting certain into in certain examples of, of, of what you've outlined the culture to be? How would you suggest uh, people kind of adapt their culture to the way things are currently? Well, I don't find that you have to adapt. What I have found is that you extend the culture to your sphere of influence. You show them the love that you've been showing each other in the market center, and now you don't see each other anymore. So you just you just expand your what I call your love base. Think of it this way: uh, ever since the world has existed, there are certain principles and certain truths that never change. One is the law of gravity. You know, just because we have a coronavirus doesn't mean that law or that principle of, of physics has changed. Well, when you look at the foundation of our culture, which is win, win, or no deal, that is the truth that's never, ever going to change. Um, you know, integrity, do the right thing, and all of those pieces of our Y4C2Ts are truths that will never change. So you can change what you do, like expand all of this to your uh, sphere of influence, but you, you'll never change the basic truths. Those will live on forever. We may someday have a culture that does not value integrity. We're not there yet. But even if they don't value integrity, you're going to have a group of people or be in groups of people where you do because you know it's an eternal truth. Mo, that goes along with your answer right now, goes along with what you said earlier, with what you said uh, when you said, hey, look, this is what I stand for, and I'm going to find those people that believe the same thing. So, yeah, it's a magnet to draw like minded people. I love that. So here's the next question to you, which goes along kind of the same lines. Uh, you well, Tristan, before you pose the next question, talk about what happened when Mo jumped on the call at first, because that'll segue oh, into this question. Mo, before we went live. Yeah. You what? talk about this, this thing that I'm doing. If you can see my screen right here, right? I can see it. You're giving me an air hug. <laughs> Let's do that. Let's hug. do that right now, and then we'll go right into Everybody it. Everybody watching, give hugs through the computer to, to you each other. Yeah, hugs are very important. I'm hugging you. Now you, you do the same for me and then keep going because you'll hug yourself so you get seven hugs a day. Uh, seven like, hugs. That's what it leads up to. So. I say if you don't get give and get seven hugs a day, you get weird. That's <laughs> Well, you need a t-shirt for that. Yes. yes I do. <laughs> so you've been a big promoter of, of the importance of giving seven hugs a day. Why seven? And what was the origin of that idea? Uh, seven is the, um, the sacred number in the Torah and in the Bible. And that's why I picked seven. Oh, I love it. That was easy. I there figured you it was, right? The completeness, right? The seven days. 
and all that whole biblical aspect. Well, there's just all of these applications in the Torah and in, and in the Bible that have to do with seven. And so a lot of people call it the sacred number, and so that's why I picked it. Maybe. That's a, you know, it's interesting because people, people always wonder like seven hugs. It's such a, such a random number. Right. But then when you, when you tell us what the, where it came from, it makes, per, it makes perfect sense. Um, so uh, what do you feel of the culture that you've created? What do you feel is the most powerful aspect of that culture? What kind of holds it all together for you? Well, let me give you a story and it will answer the question. When I was CEO in the early days, I visited an office that was back in the days when we were small enough, I could actually go to an office. Now, I, you know, I just go to regions and everybody has to come there wherever we yeah. are. Uh, but I went to an office in North Carolina and I said to the group, to the market center, I said, I need to hear a great culture story coming from this office. One girl spoke up and said, we have a powerful culture story. And I said, well, what in the world is it? And she said, one of our agents listed a property and he ended up buying that property. The next day, Another agent in the MLS system brought him an offer because she had failed to look at the computer to see that it had sold. And so the Keller Williams agent went into his team leader's office and he said, oh, this gives me chili bumps every time I tell it. He went to his team leader and he said, you know what, team leader, I have a real dilemma. If I were with my old company, all I would have done is to tell the other agent who brought the offer that the property was already sold because that's all I'm required to do under the law. But the Y4C2Ts calls me to a higher standard. So I have a dilemma. I really think what I probably ought to do is go take this offer to the seller because it's better than mine. And if they really want it, you know, it's better than what I uh, offered them. And if they really want it, I should rescind my offer and let them have the better offer. Do you get the powerful point of the story? The reason it holds everything together is because the Y4C2Ts is based on eternal truths and it can change lives or change, I should say, change how people think. See, he thought one way when he was with his old company, but because he was with Keller Williams and the team leader had drilled the Y4C2Ts in the heart, soul, and mind of everybody in that office, it affected his conscience. So he took the offer to his people. They loved it because it was for more money. He rescinded his. He did the right thing. But he put it that the Keller Williams Y4C2Ts called him to a higher standard. I think that says it all. Now, for those of those watching who, who, who aren't with Keller Williams, just so they have some clarity around what the Y4C2Ts is, it, it, you know, it's really something that you can use in your life every day. Like, it doesn't matter what company you're with. You know, and it stands for win, win, or no deal. Integrity, always do the right thing. Uh, your customers always come first. Commitment in all things. Communication, seek first to understand. Like right now, we're in a day and age where everybody reacts, right? We don't come from curiosity. Creativity, putting ideas before results. Teamwork, right? Together, everyone achieves more. Everyone succeeds through others. Uh, trust and success uh, results through people. Uh, so like... It's not 
it this is the part of the culture where really it it can reach everywhere in life and and business no matter where you are or who you are and so that's what i think is so cool about it the sad that. thing is we have hundreds and hundreds of agents who don't have it memorized and in the early days i taught the team leaders they have got to memorize it because it won't affect their conscience. It won't affect their heart if they can't remember it. So it's you know, really... What you did there, Mo, is you created the fundamentals of what we believe as a company. And that's what really drives us and gives us the identity that we're more than just real estate agents, right? That's and exactly that's, right. That's the key right there. So... I want to ask you something that, along those lines, but first I want to say um, sometimes in, in the world that we're in right now specifically, when we're either optimistic or positive, there are some people that even call us a little naive, right? And I think optimism is different than positive and it's definitely not naive, right? Optimism is the belief that I think the future is positive, that there's a light at the end of the tunnel and we're heading there together. So with that, real estate is a roller coaster ride. How can agents stay positive in their mindset so that when things get tough, they maintain that high self of a self-worth of saying, I can do this. I'm better. I can get through this. By doing a mindset check every morning where, where they learn to visualize what they want to happen out in the real world, because there are several truths about mindset. One truth is that when we change our minds, It'll have a direct, uh, it'll change the outer aspects of our life. When we change in what's inside our mind, like, um, like sellers want to sell, even during this period of time, because the interest rates are low, or because they want to move out of New York City. I, Vanessa Pollock, who is a great agent in New, New Jersey, she communicates with me a lot. And I, know she, Vanessa, I, I know Vanessa, she's in my New Jersey region. I, that's where I originally started in New Jersey. Oh, she's just amazing. She said, I have so many clients from New York City that want to move to do New Jersey and get out where there's a little bit more room where maybe there's six feet between the houses, you know. <laughs> uh, she says, I don't even know what to do. I mean, my team is maxed out with these clients. So when, but see, she knew that there would be people who wanted to buy or enlist their properties now. She just didn't know quite for sure where they would come from. And because she had the right mindset, um, so if you, if you learn that if you have the right mindset, it will change the outer aspects of your life. The second truth about mindset is that when you believe something to be true, and see, she believed that it would be true, some people were going to want to list and buy during this period. Well, when you believe something to be true, it causes you to do the things you need to be doing to make it happen. Well, that's what happened to Vanessa. She was prospecting and doing all this stuff and all of a sudden she figured it out because she was doing the things she needed to be doing to find those people. Are, are you with me on 100%. that truth? Yep. And then I want, I want all of our agents to understand and all of the people who are listening in that aren't an agent. When you want to picture something in your mind and you've got alligators nipping at you all the way around you, <laughs> I mean, they're nipping at your toes and they're nipping at your legs and they're nipping at your arms. <laughs> and you want to imagine something to be true, it's the hardest thing in the world to do. 
Forget the drug. I market. lost all my money, uh, my husband and I, in the late 80s. And I kept picturing us doing better. Well, after Gary Keller found me, we did 10 times better than we were doing before. So you see, even though it's hard to visualize what you want it to be like when the alligators are nipping, you have to, or the alligators will get you. If you'll visualize what you want to see happen, the alligators won't get you. And remember, the mind is your servant, not your master. So it's well, just- Well, Mo, I love that you brought that up because, you know, Tristan and I, in our groups, uh, you know, we have 160,000 plus agents that we engage with every single day. And, you know, I, I run the technology region for Michigan and Northern Ohio. We have 6,500 agents. Um, and so- uh, the thing is, we're seeing all the time limiting belief. I mean, essentially, that's what you're saying is the limiting belief, getting in your own way. Um, and agents are famous for that, right? This will never work in my market. You can't sell a house virtually or through a, uh, through a video. And, and so, yeah, it's, it, it, we're our own worst enemy. We are standing in the way of our own success. And so agents are saying, but I can't do that, right? Um, but if you're just honest with yourself and say, you know what, if you replaced, I can't with, I don't want to, things will completely change, right? So stop saying you can't, because that's a lie saying that you don't want to, that's the truth. And that's going to dispel on a lot of limiting beliefs. And so we have agents in our, in our group, um, for instance, uh, Nikki Klein, who just listed 11 homes without even seeing any of them last week. Um, Ken Posick took four listings without seeing them. Catherine Rain, who you know personally, she put four homes under contract without seeing them last week. This is happening all around us right now. And believe it or not, this is kind of going to be the new norm for a long time. So get out of your own way and replace that monkey. Replace that monkey. We lost Nick there. But you cut off there, Nick, but I know what you're saying. What did I say? Where did I cut off? Alligator. Replace the monkey oh shoulder replace the monkey with the alligator i'm more afraid of alligators than i am a drunk monkey um hey i want to say mo that this kind of also leads into my next question about uh, uh, about negativity and positivity like tristan was saying i was reading recently that uh psychology today um which is a psychology publication they did a, a study a few years ago and they found that 50 percent of the thoughts that we as humans think on a daily basis are negative why do you think it's so difficult for us to think positively? And so what are some of the things that you do personally to get you out of that negative mindset if you ever feel yourself coming over, coming over I, with it? I quote scriptures that, that are meaningful to me. I have affirmations that I say every day. Uh, you have to work at it because it's like, uh, a lot more bad stuff comes into our mind than positive and confident stuff. So it's like a muscle that you exercise. The more you exercise that muscle, the more positive things will start popping into your mind instead of the bad stuff. But I have to actually stop and say to myself, that is the crummiest thought I've ever had. Thought, get out of my head. I am not going to entertain you. Go away. And then I'll say my positive affirmation. We can sell houses through this. We can sell houses through this. I just heard Nick say that so-and-so got four listings and so-and-so got 11 listings and never even saw the house. We can do this. It can be done. Now shut up, Mo. Quit feeling sorry for yourself and get on the phone and go list some houses. That's well, Mo, it's funny that you say that because, because you know it's not our it's not our job as agents to you know if some look if someone is afraid uh, you know uh, uh, with what's going on today. I mean, a lot of people are scared. Obviously, coronavirus is very scary, right? And so uh, God has not given them a spirit of fear. He's given them spirit of power. Power. Get with it, man. Come on. And a sound. No, no. What, <laughs> what I mean is, what I mean is, for us, what we have to do is just tell people 
what's happening in the market, right? And, 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 and make them feel better about it, right? Like Mr. and Mrs. Seller, here's what I did last week. And I sold four, I put four homes under contract and I did it all through FaceTime, right? Um, seller, Mr. Seller, here's what we're going to do to make sure that when people come into your home, they aren't sick or they're not showing symptoms, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like set the stage and the expectations on how you're going to do this. Cause I'm in Michigan. We're like a mess right now, right? We're like number three in the top five of states that, that are just like a, a complete disaster with, with COVID and agents are still doing it. And I love that um, you're on here talking about it because it is, it is obviously the number one thing on everyone's mind. How do I do this? How do I do this? And you look at the disruptors like Zillow who are like literally backing down, right? They're moving away, pulling funding away from things because they can't even, imagine if this was a financial uh, collapse, Zillow would be gone. Meanwhile, this is a virus and they can't even function. So our disruptors are, are getting out of the game and this is our opportunity as, as, as agents to get in and show our value proposition. I think that is such an yeah. interesting point because they're scared they're hanging on to their stuff, and we're not. We're moving forward. Well, we're Mo, moving I think, onward, as Gary says. I think the challenge with what with both what both of you were saying was that the concern isn't Zillow open door. It's it's none of these big companies. The concern is the agent themselves. We're putting ourselves out of business with the mindset that we have. Oh, totally, hundred percent. Look at what's going on with some of the agents out there who are just they can't react fast enough to change, right? So adaptability needs to be quicker. Uh, but I think that that's the key. Mo, I wanted to say, I, I must have written like seven Moisms down. I think <laughs> your own line of t-shirts, right? Mo, can we make you some t-shirts and send them to you? You can do anything you want, darling. I'm We're gonna so do. excited about the great things you're saying. That Listen, you, you thank you. Appreciate it. Um, Tristan and I have also decided that on on the 21st of this month, uh, we're going to give away half of our profit share to some agents that that need it more than we do. And so um, I think that, like, you know, that's that's something that, um, you know, I know that a lot of market centers uh, are having a, a tough time profiting, but I've got a downline in in four states and three countries. So I think that I'll have enough to give away half, if not all of it. So, you know, I, I'm excited to do that. And, and, and I think that we all just need to be here for each other and we need to, we need to help each other get out of right now. Mo tough love is, is where it's at. You got to have the tough love. There's no time for crying in, in the corner right now. Got to have the tough love. Yeah. All your sphere of influence, find a reason to call them and tell them that so-and-so took 11, listings in their inventory through virtual and so and so took four tell that story to the whole world interest rates are so low that it is the perfect time for people to list and sell just tell the story of what we're doing and even if it's in michigan instead of where you are yeah by the way anyone who has to buy or list a home, buy or sell a house right now they like have to buy or sell a house right now so find those people, pour into your database, ask them if they're okay. If you're on your way to the store, ask them if they need toilet paper, you know, pour into them and ask them <laughs> if they need things. You know what I mean? It's very easy to have conversations. I was talking to an agent up in Canada named Josh Bickle. He is very analytical. He's saying he is having, uh, his conversations are lasting, this is how analytical he is, 16% longer. <laughs> than normal because everyone's at home and they want to talk to humans. They don't want to talk to their four-year-olds anymore. They want to talk to grown-ups. That's right. So I want to say two more things real quick because I've got another call at 1.30. But yep. uh, number one, I had surgery four weeks ago and I need distilled water, you know, to clean out the sinuses that they did this extensive surgery in and I had no idea that they were hoarding distilled water like they were toilet paper wow. you know 
there's no toilet paper. Well, there, I ran out of distilled water and the shelves were bare. A Keller Williams agent found out I needed distilled water. She got on her phone, called her sphere of influence, and to make a long story very short, I ended up with 103 gallons of distilled water on my front porch. Now, that's how much her sphere of influence wanted to help and wanted to do. Isn't that amazing? She had to spend one whole day driving all over all over the country picking up this distilled water. What a great example of leading through giving, right? Which is what right. we preach all the time. And, and the other thing I want to tell you is I decided the other day, I thought, you know what? <clears throat> Our agents aren't recruiting like they should be, so I'm just gonna go recruit somebody and make them understand that it's doable even right now in coronavirus. So I call up um, a mother-daughter team that are really good producers at Berkshire Hathaway. They come with us. I'm getting emails from them. I'm getting fruit baskets from them thanking me for getting them to Keller Williams because they said we have 10 times more good stuff over here than we had at Berkshire Hathaway. This is the perfect time to call on the people that you love in your area that you'd love to have on the team. And all you have to say is I'm just calling you to check on you. You know, are you, are you, do you have enough computer stuff a technology to get you through and then share some of the things that we have that they might not. And do you have a coach and on and on and on. They are so thrilled. It is just fun to watch them. I love that. Thank you, Mo. So look, you, you said some amazing things and to wrap up, I'm just going to do like little one liners that could be on a shirt. These are Moisms. Just to wrap it up, remember, no nipping alligators, no fear, seven hugs, mo mindset, and mo love. All right? And so, mo money. And mo money. That We should add that at the end. Like now, because you see, I tell people when they re read The Millionaire Real Estate Agent, I say, this book is about you making more money than you need. I love That's right. It. Mo money. Mo, my, uh, mo I almost mo called money. you money. <laughs> mo. Mo, thank you so I much. I have fire in my belly, and I want you all to have fire in your belly so that we can prove to all the big shots and all the MBA schools that we know how to make it happen in a downturn. I love That's that. right. I can feel that fire, Mo. I can feel I that. feel the fire in your belly too, Mo. Mo. I love it. Mo, you're the best. Thank you so much for being here with us. It's an honor. We know that you have a busy day, and you know you keep that energy going. I wish that... When I get older and I'm and, and, and I'm 80 years young, I have that same yeah, energy and fire in my belly too. I'll be 83 two days oh. before Red Day. 83, and I'm still cooking. Still, you're still cooking with fire, Mo. Oh man, yeah. I love uh, it. Right, well, guys, this is recorded, and you can go to our Lab Code Agents business page on Facebook and on YouTube. We'll add this too, so watch that there and. Let's everybody thank Mo. Just do a, a lot of thank yous, a lot of hearts, a lot of thumbs up, and air hugs to Mo. Come on, air hugs, okay. and then end up hugging yourself. yourself. And I just oh. tell, your, tell your people I love what they put on the chat box. Oh, man, it's awesome. I love it's it. It's blowing up, Mo. People love you. Oh, I just... Thank you, Mo. Have an awesome day. Okay. Love, Bye. Bye. Love y'all so much. Love you back. Thank you.